Welcome back. It's Friday. I'm Rob Levine from Rob Levine and Associates. So we wanted to do a follow-up on the Paycheck Protection Program. This would be our third video on that program. Fantastic news for everybody who's listening. Daycares, restaurants, physical therapists, doctors, lawyers, everyone. So last week on Friday, the House passed a bill, 417 to 1. Yesterday or the day before yesterday, the Senate passed that bill as the House passed it, and Trump just signed it into law about a half an hour ago. So we have a new law in place that now fixes all of the problems that has really been crippling businesses that borrowed money under the Paycheck Protection Program. So what do you need to know? So under the old rules, you had eight weeks to spend the money eight weeks from the date you received the funds or the next full billing cycle after you received the funds and then another eight weeks. They just extended that to 24 weeks. So there is no reason anyone shouldn't be able to get their business up and running as we're coming out of Corona, call people back to work, get people in the door, make money, and you have 24 weeks to spend that money. That's number one. Number two, the date of restoring your FTE headcount. If you remember, we talked about the FTE headcount, full-time employees. So you had to, if you decreased that number of people, you had to take a loss in your loan forgiveness or restore that number by June 30th. June 30th has now been pushed out to December 31st. So you have until December 31 to restore your headcount without a loss of your loan forgiveness. Fantastic news. Next. Also, you are not allowed to reduce your employees' wages greater than 25% for anyone making less than 100,000. If you did that, you were going to have a reduction in your loan forgiveness. However, you can restore those wages. It was June 30th, again, extended until December 31st. So two things extended out to December 31st, the full-time equivalent uh, headcount and the restoration of wages if anyone came in less than 25%. And remember, the FTE headcount now, they've added two things. Under the old rules, if you offered someone their job back at the regular pay, at their old job, and they refused to come back to work, then that person counted towards your FTE. Under the new rules, first of all, if you offer somebody their job back and they don't come back to work, you're supposed to notify unemployment within 30 days of that date that they've refused work. The two new things are by December 31st, when you go to restore your headcount, if you're unable to restore your headcount because the CDC, the state guidelines, or OSHA still have healthcare requirements in place to protect your team or protect your employees, such as six feet social distancing in the office, no more than a certain number of people. If that affects your office setting and you still can't hit the number you were at, let's say you were at 100 people and they were working in cubicles, right one next to the other. Well, and you have to be six feet apart. That's gonna cut your number in half. You no longer have to be at 100, you can be at 50 people and have no loan forgiveness issue. The second reason is, if you can't get a quality employee in place to replace the person who left. So when you go to restore by December 31st, if you can't find suitable employees, that fit the criteria you need because they're not available, then you can have forgiveness under the FTE rules. The next amendment to the rules is that the use of the funds had to be spent 75% on payroll, 25% on the other category, rent, utilities, transportation. That's now been changed to 60% on payroll and 40% on other. Now, if you dropped below 75% on the old rules, that was going to be a percentage reduction of your loan forgiveness. With the 60%, it's a cliff. What does that mean? If you spend less than 60% of the funds on payroll, you fall off the cliff and the entire loan is not forgivable. So do not spend less than 60%. The next thing is any part of the funds that aren't forgivable, instead of having a two-year loan, it's now a five-year loan. The 1% remains the same, so 1% interest at five years. But at 24 weeks, there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to use your entire loan and make it forgivable. The last change is, uh, they've added in a new clause that says the employer payroll taxes. You can defer those taxes for up to two years. So if that's helpful for you, you can defer it. So those are the changes. They're dramatic. They make the loan much more business friendly, much more usable. And if you have questions, as always, email me. 
Don't link to me on Facebook or Instagram. Send me an email with your questions. Rob at RobLevine.com. Thanks and have a great day.